Hi Galveston dieters, happy Sunday. I am coming to you live from my house. Um, hang on, my little headband doesn't want to stay on. I gotta fix it. Um, and I want to talk today about fasting. I made a couple of videos about fasting and they are going a little crazy, which is good. I love when people have questions or comments. Um, I'll tell you about my journey with fasting. I was hearing, you know, fasting has always been a thing when I was in medical school, we learned about people who kind of accidentally fasted because they didn't have access to food or religious reasons. I was brought up Roman Catholic, so we fasted during Lent. You know, it was more of a religious thing or something that happened on accident um, just because you got in a situation where you didn't have access to food. So learning about fasting as a medical you know, helpful thing was something I was very hesitant about. I started hearing about it in the literature. You know, I was busy doing OB-GYN, seeing patients, delivering babies, being in clinic, and I'd hear wisps of things in popular media or social media, but I was just busy living my life and doing whatever. And I just kind of immediately dismissed fasting as a fad. Why would you restrict yourself? It can exacerbate eating behavior problems. It still can do that. But, you know, how how could this really be something that was helpful to people? Um, so then I, um, you know, went through menopause, gained all this weight, couldn't get it off with calories in, calories out, and... Um, said, well, let me start researching what's going on with women and middle age, because I was an OB-GYN, not able to help my patients who were my age going through menopause, and we're all gaining weight. We're all gaining weight in our midsections. So after some consultation with the, with the PhD nutritionist at the university I was working at and the registered dietitians, someone kind of pointed me into the like, take a look at what's going on with fasting and the research that's going on. So like a good physician, I went to PubMed, which is my go-to. Um, and if you're a lay person, you might want to consider Google Scholar. It's not bad. Um, and started looking up the science of intermittent fasting and what kind of the smartest people in the room were utilizing fasting for and what was going on. And I ran across Cross, Mark Matson, Dr. Mark Matson, who is a PhD um, biophysiologist who was utilizing fasting to treat Alzheimer and dementia models. And I was like, what? It just made no sense to me. And so I, he has a great TED Talk. If you have not seen it, just Google Mark Matson, M-A-T-T-S-O-N, National Institutes of Health, TED Talk on intermittent fasting, and it will absolutely blow your mind on fasting. So he talks both about regular fasting and the what I call the extreme fasting. So once I started reading that and hearing him and reading his research on breaking down the physiology of what happens to our bodies while we fast, I absolutely got my mind blown. You know, I was like, wait a minute, this is way more than just a fad. Um, this has some real science behind it and can be um, quite a thing. So, you know, th I think this is something I want to consider as part of my own health journey. So I was like, okay, I added that to the list of things I was going to, you know, add to my um, intermittent fasting. So I got some really, really good advice before I started practicing fasting, not to jump into it. My goal was I knew myself and I knew I wanted to create new habits. I'm a, I have ADHD and so I need systematic things to keep me in control. And so building new daily habits where I don't have to think about it, it's just automatic, really helps me not go off the, the rails with my ADHD. And um, I knew, so I wanted to practice daily intermittent fasting. You do have some health benefits with the, what they call the 5-2, which is an extreme fast of 500 calories a day, um, followed by whatever you want to eat. And then so twice a week, like a Monday, Thursday or a Tuesday, Friday or whatever days work for you, you do extreme fasting. You do have health benefits of both. Um, however, I knew myself. I knew myself. I knew how my brain works. And I knew that if I didn't build it into a daily habit, I would put it off, I would schedule things around it, and it would never become part of my daily practice. So I opted for the 16-8 fast. And I chose 16-8 because that's what the researchers were doing with human subjects, was 16 hours of continuous fasting followed by an eight-hour um, eight eating window. So um, 
I said, okay. Um, and if you guys have questions, just drop them in the uh, question box down below. I will, you got, there's so many of you watching right now and the, the comments scroll by so fast. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this daily intermittent fast thing. But you know what? The first thing I did before I, you know, my normal practice was get up in the morning, go straight to the coffee pot, make my coffee, dump a bunch of crap in it and then drink my coffee. And then right after I finished my coffee, I would eat breakfast. And I would break my fast with like oatmeal or grits or some kind of ultra processed carbohydrate, probably loaded with salt and sugar. The worst thing I could feed my body with first thing in the morning, but you know, or cereal, which is the worst thing you can put in your body. And um, so I said, okay, um, first of all, I can't do all of this at once. So the first thing I had to do was learn how to drink my coffee black. Yeah. I grew up Cajun. Okay. My grandmother put coffee milk in my bottle at five years old. I was still on a bottle at five, which is why I have all the dental issues I have now, probably. My grandmother, God love her, would put that much coffee, that much milk. If y'all are from Louisiana or from the South, you know what coffee milk is, and a ton of sugar. Mix that up, put it in a baby bottle, and give it to me for breakfast like when I spent the night at her house. It was freaking delicious, okay? Cafe au lait is another thing we call it back home. But, you know, real Cajuns don't say cafe au lait. They say coffee milk. So um, so I had to learn how to undo all that. So I was like, I will never. I used to travel with equal in a Ziploc in my purse because I was scared anywhere I went. They wouldn't have the thing I wanted to put in my coffee, and it wouldn't taste right. So I was like, I can't, that will, I will never do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. No, I will not give up my coffee. My husband drank black. Okay. And then I just made up my mind. If I'm going to do this, I got to do it. And I need some better health habits as I age. The weight was one thing, but you know, I'd lost one brother. Another brother had cancer and I'd lost a brother when I was nine. So I was down two and one was dying. So I'm like, I got to get serious about this shit. You know, coffee was just one little tiny part of the factor. So I was like, I can do this. So I got advice. Who drinks black coffee? Me, 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 me. What do you do? They drink high quality coffee. So none of the Folgers stuff, no offense to Folgers, but mm. um, high quality coffee. Consider, at, uh, you know, natural flavored coffee and take it slow. So the first thing I did was invest in high quality coffee. Then I started weaning myself down. It took about two weeks of slowly adding less and less. I used to open the packet of Equal and pour half and then and save it for the next day until I just got to black, um, to, to, to none. And then I was decreasing. I used to put milk. Just two, We have 2% milk. I would put that in my coffee. I decreased that amount over time. Um, and after two weeks, I was drinking black. It still wasn't exactly easy, but it just took about a month and then... I drink black coffee all the time now. It's absolutely fine. It is no problem. And if you're scared, I just did a TikTok on this. You can put cinnamon in your coffee. You can put a, da- a little, little dash of salt. It works. It cuts the bitterness. I'm telling you. Right now, I there's a Galveston Coffee Roasters here in town. So I'll get stuff from them. I'll do Starbucks if I'm in a pinch. Um, community. I'm from Louisiana. So I'll do a community brand flavor. They have a, oh God, they have a king cake flavor. Mm. Mm, all you know all just natural flavors it's incredible so um okay so that was step one all right so then I conquered that I'm like all right now we got to work on this eating window thing I was still eating breakfast about 6 30 in the morning so the advice I got and the advice I give in the Galveston diet and we walk you through the step by step in the program is take it slow give yourself weeks especially if you exercise in the morning you can exercise fasted, but it is not an overnight phenomena. I pushed my eating window out 15 to 30 minutes at a time. I would set an alarm, set it on my watch or on my phone, and be like, I'm going to eat at 6.45 today. So going from 6.30 to 6.45 was not a big deal. Mentally, it was a big deal. 6.45, and I did that for four or five days until it was comfortable, natural, normal, and it did not affect me at all. Then I pushed to 7.00 three, four, five days, then 7.30, on and on and on and on. I gave myself the gift of patience and time. And I can remember sitting in my office, because I was still in the clinic seeing patients, getting to noon for the first time. I I would always pack my lunch, and I'd be like, ding, it's noon. And I was like, I made it. I made it 16 hours for the first time. I didn't do it overnight. It took me weeks and weeks and weeks. But by doing it that way, 
it was normal. It was natural. My body became fasting adapted. I didn't go through withdrawals. I didn't have hypoglycemia. I wasn't an angry bitch. I was completely in control and in charge of stuff. You have got to give yourself the gift of patience and time. You have, you know, my mantra in the Galveston diet, you have the rest of your life to figure this out. You don't have to get it perfect today. You don't. And in our boot camp and in everything, we coach you through this step by step by step. Okay. We also go through the science of it. So when you're struggling in those few minutes, you're like, I'm, you know, the good that you're doing for your body, you know, the science behind it. And I'm going to talk, I'm going to touch on the science a little bit in a second. So feel free to share this video. <laughs> feel free to. I wasn't an angry bitch. Okay, I said that out loud. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. No, if you go through fasting the way I teach you to, you will not be ravenous at the end of your 16 hours. You'll be like, it's time to eat. I'm hungry. I'm fasting right now. My last meal was at six o'clock last night. Oh, actually, I'm lying. No, I broke my fast at noon. I don't even know what day it is. I did break my fast at noon. Um, but I made it 18 hours. No big deal. And I did an hour of HIIT training and an hour of yoga. Fasted. Now, I'm years into my fasting practice. Years and years and years. I am fasting adapted. You can't do that when you first start fasting. You have to ease into it. Absolutely have to ease into it. Okay. So a lot of questions are, how do you break it? Do not confuse ketosis with fasting. They are two completely separate things. Okay. You're going to see all these gym bros and gurus and people with fake credentials who are telling you, oh, you can put my additive in your coffee. You can put this butter and all this shit in there. It won't break your fast. It may, it will break your fast. It may not break your ketosis, but it will break your fast and you're going to lose out on the medicinal benefits. The Galveston diet is not a keto program. We don't care if you're in ketosis. We don't track it. I don't even want to know. Are you going to be in ketosis from time to time? Yes. The production of ketones is a natural side effect of burning fat for fuel. And if you need to lose weight, you need to burn fat. Our goal is to have you burn fat, not muscle. And that takes some special, special, special things you got to know about in the Galveston diet, okay? Simple caloric restriction for weight loss will lead to weight loss. 50% fat, 50% muscle. When you lose muscle, you lose basic metabolic rate, okay? Muscle is what controls your basic metabolic rate. And then you gain the weight back and you've gained all fat, no muscle back. That is what we are trying to avoid with the Galveston diet, okay? Fasting is not a great plan for weight loss. You will see people saying, I've lost this much, that much, that much, that much. Some people lose a ton of weight. Most people do not. It's just meh, okay, for weight loss, okay? We fast for the medical benefits. We fast for the decreased inflammation. We fast for the decreased blood sugar. We fast for the decreased resting fasting insulin levels. Huge. We fast for the decreased cortisol over time. That is why we fast. Some of you will lose a ton of weight through fasting, and that's amazing. But most of you will not, and you'll get frustrated. Fasting is only one component of the Galveston diet. We have three, and they work synergistically together synergistically to not only have you lose weight, but to hang on to your muscle and to promote your health and wellness long-term. Why don't I like keto? Because the way most people do keto, but I go into it in depth in the program. Um, so I'm kind of looking at the comment. Um, okay. So, um, what cheese causes the least amount of inflammation? So if you're lactose intolerant, Parmesan is going to be your friend because parm contains almost no lactose. So most people who are lactose intolerant can have small amounts of parm, like as a topping or a flavoring. You don't sit there and gnaw at it, but, um, you know, as an accoutrement, um, press, media, podcast, videos, blog, blah, blah, blah. But there's a science tab. So if you click on science, um, a lot of the peer reviewed journal articles, the science articles and some lay articles, um, are, can you guys see me? Okay. Um, so let me go. So there's a ton of research articles that I use to formulate the Galveston diet. Um, so there's, um, effects of intermittent composition and clinical health markers in humans. This was an article done in nutrition reviews. It was published in 2015 
Um, but anyway, so intermittent fasting, remember guys, is a broad term that encompasses a variety of programs that manipulate the timing of eating um, by utilizing short-term fasts in order to improve body composition and overall health. They say nothing, you know, body composition meaning the distribution of fat, not your weight. So what happens when you fast? You may not lose weight, but you are shifting fat away from the viscera, away from the dangerous internal organs. You're losing belly fat, losing belly fat. Let's see, it says I'm glitching. Give me a second. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, I'm back on. I'm on. Um, I'm off of Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi was glitching. Um, do y'all see me now? Am I good now? Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Um, okay, so there have been studies, like medical studies, conducted on intermittent fasting programs to determine if they're effective at improving body composition and clinical health markers associated with disease and inflammation. So um, intermittent fasting protocols are um, can be grouped into alternate day fasting, whole day fasting, and time-restricted feeding. What we do is time-restricted feeding. The other fasting protocols are more of the extreme fast. I like intermittent fasting, daily intermittent fasting, daily time restricted feeding because it becomes a daily habit. It's something that you practice on a day-to-day -day basis and becomes a normal, normal part of your day. So, um, let's see. So what they found was um, reduce, you know, some reduction of body weight, a definite reduction of body fat. So you win, um, and a very favorable improvement in blood lipids. So your cholesterol uh, levels get better, a up to 50% reduction in triglycerides and um, really showed some incredible health benefits as well as a decrease in some of your um, inflammatory markers. So um, remember, fasting has been around for millennia. People have been doing it mostly for religious reasons or for they couldn't help but fast because there was no food available. Um, but periodic fasting does protect against diabetes, cancer, heart disease, neurodegeneration. And in humans, it helps reduce obesity, hypertension, asthma, and rheumatoid arthritis, all probably because it lowers our systemic inflammation levels. Um, so um, a lot of physicians who are woke to this consider it an important part of overall health. You know, instead of giving people medications, maybe we can talk about nutrition and fasting for better health. Um, <clears throat> so, but all of this um, is in the science. So everybody says, oh, it's not great in women. It's not great in women. Um, present studies you know, are really showing lots of positive benefits in women. I think it's it's a lot of the gym rats and the bro dudes who are very seco oriented calories in, calories out. It cuts into their bottom line when we talk about fasting. Um, it might be not be good for a 25 year old dude, but it is very, very good for a woman. For a woman. Um, so fasting in mental health, fasting in metabolic health, fasting in musculoskeletal health, all good. As long as you're getting the proper nutrients, in your eating window. Um, so all of these studies are listed. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the questions now um, and see what you guys have to ask. Does intermittent fasting help with depression? Um, okay, so mental health issues are very, very common. I've got notes here. And women who undergo the menopause transition. So when we go through perimenopause, we see either new diagnoses of depression and anxiety, et cetera, or we see exacerbation of pre-existing disease. Um, let's see, um, emotional instability, uh, tension, moodiness, anxiety. Um, many studies explain the positive effects of fasting on promoting mental health. Um, it's reported that fasting improves self-esteem to a greater extent. You feel better about yourself. And when you read the comments on people who are successfully fasting, it's amazing how they feel about themselves and conquering the fasting thing. Um, so many clinicians have found that fasting is often accompanied by an increased level of vigilance and mood improvement. Um, and then many neurobiological mechanisms have been propo proposed to describe the effects of fasting on mood, such as changes in neurotransmitters, quality of sleep, synthesis of neurotrophic factors. Um, so yeah, 
So many clinical observations relate the early effect of fasting on depressive symptoms with an improvement in mood alertness and a sense of peacefulness. Um, so yeah, fasting serves as a mental health um, enhancer, especially in women. So I would recommend it. Um, so if you want to learn more about the Galveston Diet and our program, you can just Google galvestondiet.com or luckily I get one link on TikTok. You guys can check it out. If you go up here to Galveston Diet, um, you click there and um, it'll take you to my main page and then you'll see my picture and some info about me and then a bolded link. You just click on that link and then that'll take you into the website or into the program so you can learn more and see if you think that if this may be a good fit for you or not. So, um, okay. How about for acid in your stomach? So um, can you give me a little more clarification on that question? I'm not sure what you mean. If I have 40 pounds to lose, could this program work? Absolutely. We have multiple testimonies from several different students, uh, tens, hundreds, um, who have had extreme amounts of weight to lose, who are doing very, 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 very well on the program. Um, so right now, we are moving to a membership model, probably in September, but right now it's still one time for the signature program for gold and for platinum. Galveston for Life is our online community where, where we host our challenges. That's where the Galveston 50 challenge is. We have guest speakers. We just had a plastic surgeon come on and do a whole free live talk on... Um, breast augmentation and uh, tummy tucks on women over 40. We've had sleep specialists, sexual medicine specialists come on. We have live Q&As with our coaches. We have live Q&As with me. Um, it's really a great place. You know, we do, we do daily prompts every day. It's a great place to have a community, but that is a fee. That's called Galveston for Life, and you'll see the prompt for that. Um, but it's only for people who are enrolled or students in the signature program. So, um, okay. Okay. Um, you like toasted coconut coffee, okay for the Galveston diet. If it's a natural flavor and it doesn't give you any calories, it's absolutely fine. Um, let's see. Fasting helps with her lymphedema after cancer treatment. That's fantastic. Probably because it helps to lower your inflammation levels, which will help the uh, lymph move quicker through your uh, system. Um, your rheumatoid arthritis is so much better and your doc doesn't believe you. Okay. I believe you, and I'm a doctor. You're, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's just, we're not taught about the medical benefits. At least my generation of physician was never taught about fasting for the medicinal benefits. This is something kind of new. Really since the early 2010s, 2020, so unless they've kept up with the literature and what's going on and the revolution that fasting has become, they're going to just stick to what they were taught in school and residency. So, um, if your symptoms are better, that's fantastic. And I absolutely believe you. It lowers your systemic inflammatory levels. Hence, your rheumatoid arthritis gets better. So good for you. Can I promise that for every rheumatoid arthritis patient? No. But I, we definitely have lots of testimonials to that. Um, how much to join? We have three levels. Um, we have the signature program, which is our basic self-study. If that's all you need, if you're a self-starter, it's perfect for you. It's $59. Do y'all need me? No? Okay. Sorry, the kids. Um, we have our gold program, which is signature plus the recipe collection, the companion guide, the um, daily meditation journal, the um, workout program, uh, for $99 and then, and you get a discount. So ooh, I forgot that part. TikTok 10, the way the app spells it, T-I-K-T-O-K-1-0 to save 10% on the cost of any of our programs. And then platinum is all of that plus a month in our boot camp coaching group, which is 28 days. The next one starts August 1st. So next, we start them on Sunday. So we have one on the 1st and one on the 15th. Yeah, August, Sunday, August 1st. It's about to fill, so it might bump you to the 15th, so you want to grab your spot now. Um, if it's available, we do limit the spot, so we keep a, a tight community in our coaching groups. Um, and that is 90, $199, um, but you can get a 10% discount on that by using TikTok 10. Um, okay, let me see. Remember, guys, put your questions in the question box down below. You have a friend with lupus. Could this help her? Get, send her the link to the program. Have her check it out, and she needs to show it to her doctor to make sure that her physician is on board with it. Um, MCT in your coffee breaks your fast. Yes, it has calories. It breaks your fast. You can put MCT all you want after you break your fast, but while you're fasting, no calories. 
do supplements, medicine, break a fast? Not typically. However, I can't do that. I get nauseated. So I just wait till I break my fast to do my supplements or I don't have to take medication on a daily basis. I have my patch for um, my hormone replacement therapy. Um, let's see. Can you gain weight on hormone replacement therapy? The, so when they did, they've done multiple studies looking at women on hormone replacement therapy versus women who opted out or couldn't take it for whatever reason. And the women who opted out gained more and had more visceral fat. So they gained more and they got more belly fat than the women who stayed on HRT. So typically you, in, but everybody did gain some weight, part of the aging and inflammation process because they were not changing their nutrition. Um, but the women who, who were not on HRT gained more and more belly fat and more of an unhealthy fat distribution. Um, intermittent fasting lowers your blood pressure. Is that okay? Hell yeah. You lowered your inflammation levels. Everything gets better, including blood pressure typically. Um, not true. PCOS lowers, PCOS, sorry. Intermittent fasting lowers your fasting blood sugar and your, I don't know who told you that, but throw that out the window. Intermittent fasting will lower your fasting blood sugar and your insulin levels. Absolutely. Okay. They've done studies where they took the exact matched groups of people and they had them eat isocalometric diets, except these people did it in an eight hour window and these people ate on demand. These people lost a little bit of weight, not much. Remember, fasting is just okay for weight loss, but they had decreased visceral fat. So the, the dangerous metabolically active belly fat much less, okay, they lost that, and their blood pressures improved. <laughs> so um, their fasting insulin levels went down, and when your fasting insulin levels get down, your PCOS gets better, okay? Let's see. Um, can you eat brown rice? Sure, if you want to. Uh, not during your fasting period, though. You're on thyroxin and metformin, so you have hypothyroidism and diabetes. Brown rice is a much better option for you than white rice. It's going to, because of the increase, because white rice strips the fiber away from the grain of rice. So it takes something that was really healthy like brown rice. And also the fiber, you know, the coating is where the vitamins, the minerals, and the nutrients are. And when you strip that off, you're just left with sugar. So that is the, white rice is one of the worst things that a diabetic can try to ingest because it's just going to make your blood sugar go crazy. And you're going to have to take more medicine to control your blood sugar. Brown rice is a way better alternative. Um, tried IF over, over eight when it was time to eat. Okay. So you did not ease into fasting more than likely. You just went for the gusto. You got hypoglycemic, um, because you didn't ease into it over weeks. You probably jumped and went way too fast to your fasting window. And then you were hypoglycemic, which made your hunger go up through the roof. You've got to give yourself a gift of time and give yourself weeks. It's okay, baby. <laughs> She's getting nice out of the ice machine. They're tiptoeing around because <laughs> I'm on live. Um, is it possible to be perimenopausal if you're ovulating? Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely yes. Can you take too much probiotics? If you, I haven't seen any studies that show toxicity of probiotics. I haven't seen any, but I just do it according to the manufacturer's uh, recommendations. I don't go over that. Um, what can you put in your coffee when fasting? Great question. A pinch of salt in the grinds, a little dash of cinnamon, some nutmeg, anything that can impart flavor without calories. But I would avoid artificial sweeteners. Um, and I would avoid stevia and monk fruit during fasting because they do stimulate the sweet receptors on the tongue, which can cause a concomitant rise in insulin. Um... If you can you do IF if you have stomach acid problems, you have got to ease into it and see how you do. Just push your window out 30 minutes at a time. People get into trouble with other issues when they push their fasting windows out too fast. Um, can you do intermittent fasting if you already have type 2 diabetes? We have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of students who are type 2 diabetics, but they were in good control and they talked to their doctors first. So I recommend listen to it. Um, oh, I did that one. Can you gain weight on HRT? Um, a supplement, typically, it'll tell you on the back of the bottle if it has calories or not. So 
calories, or you know, less than five calories is fine. Um, best way to cut carbs slowly. Check us out at GalvestonDiet.com. I have lots, and you know, our program is all about this. And remember, we don't cut all carbs. We're learning how to break the addiction to sugar. We're learning how to choose carbohydrates that are good for our body. There are lots of carbohydrates you can enjoy that are so healthful and so good for you. We are not an anti-carb or uh, program. We're going to teach you how to rethink carbohydrates in a healthy way. Uh, liquid crystal light is chemicals. There's nothing natural about it, so I'm not a fan. It's they're highly infl it's highly inflammatory. Um, let's see. No, it is not normal to have heavy periods on birth control. If you're having heavy periods on birth control, there's something wrong. You need to make an appointment to see your gynecologist as soon as possible. Um, should we alternate probiotic strains? You, I wouldn't alternate as much as try to do pick a supplement that has multiple strains. So billions is better, and and very. So the one I have has eighty billion cultures and thirty two strains, and I take it every day. Um. So 16-8 is where most of the studies were done. But again, when you choose your, your window, depends on your life, what your family does, what makes sense for you. I have, you know, for me, um, breakfast is not a big deal with our family. I want to have dinner with my family at night. And so that's when we have our community. And so I have chosen a 12 noon to 8 p.m. eating window. But we have people in our in our uh, students in our program who move there, you know, who pick a window that works for them. That's what I love the flexibility about it. Um, okay, I'm just reading the questions. Hang on, guys. I do not have any opinion about CBD. None. Um, let's see. Uh, water flavoring. Okay, so if you guys have questions, put them in the little question box down below. There's so many on you, li so many of you watching live that we lose, um, they, they scroll by so fast, I can't read them fast enough. Um, let me see here. Flavoring. Okay, lemon. Anything citrus. Citrus peel. So if you're going to do lemon and lime are fine. The whole juice, like the squeeze. Um, but be careful. It can. Um, my dental people tell me, watch out for the enamel in your teeth. Um, so you want to do that in a lot of water. So you dilute the acid. The acid can eat the enamel on your teeth. You want to... Um, you can put spearmint, rosemary, you can just, you know, diffuse cucumber. There's a lot of things you can put in your water for flavoring. I would not add anything artificial or chemicals. I wouldn't do anything like Mio or any of that stuff. You really want to stick with things that come from the ground, from, na from nature. You're 70 years old and 100 pounds overweight. Is fasting... So it may be helpful for you, but I definitely would talk to your physician first. You probably have some concomitant medical issues if you are 70 years old and have 100 pounds that you'd like to lose. So I bet there's some other issues going on as well. So I would make an appointment with your doctor and tell them that you are interested in considering fasting as part of your health progress and make sure that you're not on any medications that would contraindicate it or you have any health conditions that would contraindicate it. Is Diet Coke okay for intermittent fasting? Um, so it won't break your fast, but Diet Coke is just chemicals and water. There's nothing from nature in it. And uh, I know a lot of people are addicted to it. You can get your caffeine from other sources that are more natural and a lot better for you. So one of the things that you may wanna consider is breaking the addiction to Diet Coke. Okay, so perimenopause causes irregular cycles for sure. But if it's two in a month and it's because it's a pattern, if it only happens one time, you're probably fine. But if it's if it becomes a pattern, you need to see your doctor and because something else may be going on and you might just write it off to perimenopause when your body is telling you something else has changed in the anatomy or um, rather than just your hormones. So remember, if you guys were on earlier, fasting is not a great way to lose weight. 
Fasting has medical benefits. It lowers inflammation. It, it decreases your fat, your glucose levels. It decreases your insulin levels, which are all super healthy. It'll, it'll decrease your cortisol levels. But it's not a fabulous form to lose weight. Why? Because you can eat a lot of crap during your eating window. So in the Galveston diet, we utilize fasting as just one part of our entire system of things that we, you know, we utilize fasting for the medical benefits. And then we have anti-inflammatory nutrition and fuel refocusing to kind of round it out. And they work synergistically together to get you the goals that you want. Um, tips for someone who just turned 40. Avoid all high fructose corn syrup. Go see your doctor. Make sure you get your well woman exam every year. Make sure you're exercising at least five days a week. A mix of cardio and resistance training as well as balance and stretching. Make yourself a priority. Make sure that you make yourself number one. You give yourself self-care. That you're meditating, journaling, and taking care of yourself. Put your oxygen mask on first before anybody else. Um, we have irritable bowel sufferers in our program who are doing very well. Again, if you're on medication or under a doctor's care, talk to them first and then consider checking us out. All right, I'm going to wrap this up here, but if you want to learn more about us, we are gallisondiet.com. Um, you can click on here and it'll take you directly to our um, website. You can take the inflammation quiz. You can learn, read all my blogs, watch videos, um, look at simple meal plans to see if you think that this is going to be a good fit for you. All right, everybody have a great day.